What is up ladies and gentlemen, Manny here. Welcome back to the channel. During these fascinating Corona times, I just finished my home workout, my room workout. Uh, you know, I've been getting messages, tons of messages recently about people, you know, staying in quarantine. What can they do to, you know, at least uphold their climbing fitness, uphold their strength a little bit for when the quarantine measures are finally over. So that we can all go out and have a lot of fun on the rock again. So I thought about some stuff. Uh, maybe I remember it now out of my head, I hope so. The first thing, of course, that's very important when we're talking about climbing performance, finger strength. The number one requirement for climbing performance in general, in, in my opinion, as you probably already know if you're watching the channel for some time. Um, so yeah, hopefully you have your hangboard at home. If you don't have your hangboard at home and you're a rock climber, then what are you doing with your life anyway? Okay, so you already made a big mistake there. Uh, you gotta have your hangboard at home, something like a beast maker or something like that. I'm lucky enough that I now on the trip have my, always my finger shinder with me, which I uh, installed very professionally here already, as you can see uh, in this beautiful um, pre-roll footage that I shot here. Uh, it's very useful in that kind of uh, situation because you can train finger strength at home. Now how do you do that? That's the question. A lot of people, you know, if it's not in your focus so far, maybe you're not that high level of a climber, you haven't finger strength training yet because it wasn't necessary. So how are you gonna go about these things, you know, how are you gonna start? Probably you just want to do some basic hangs, just 10 seconds, okay, with all different grip types. If you don't know the grip types, then watch my grip types video from the past. Um, but essentially it's about, you know, four fingers open, four fingers, uh, four fingers half crimp, three fingers open and all that kind of stuff. Just do some basic hangs and see how you develop, see how you like this kind of thing and what is your strongest grip, what is your weakest grip and all that kind of stuff. And if you've done that, then you can start doing repeaters. Now, depending on how long this situation is gonna last, I would go for a, you know, let's say the situation lasts for two months, then you could go for a little bit of a strategy, you know, a little bit of a building up finger strength strategy. Would be really awesome if you somehow track your progress during this time. So let's say you're starting with seven second repeaters, which means seven seconds hanging. I made a video about that as well, by the way, in the past. Seven seconds hanging, three seconds resting, seven seconds hanging, three seconds resting. And you do that for six times so that you fulfill one minute of training. That's one set. And then you rest for, let's say, two, three minutes or something and then repeat the set. Now it would be cool if you could add some weight, for example, after some time and do the exercise harder that way. Or you make the edge a little bit smaller, okay, and make the exercise harder that way so that you can see and measure your progress. That would be really cool. And let's say we have two months of time here, then I would go with five weeks, for, for example, with, this, with these repeaters, making them harder and harder. And the last, let's say, three weeks or something, you just do max hangs. And what max hangs are, essentially recruiting those muscle fibers that you've hopefully gained during the repeater phase with, with one-armed um, max hands, okay? So you basically get one arm on your edge and try to lock it off as hard as possible. Ideally, you have a scale or something like that you can, you can put below your feet so that you can see how much weight you can actually pull off the floor with this edge, with your hand, right hand, left hand. Okay, you make one hang left hand, one hang right hand, and you make a rest, let's say three, four minutes, and one hang right hand, one hang left hand. And so you're gonna always alternate these two, uh, the, the two hands, okay? Uh, maybe, I don't know, you know, one hang, a hangboard session that lasts longer than one hour, it's a general rule of, of thumb, hangboard session that lasts longer than one hour or is probably too long. Okay, you should have the intensity high enough so that you destroy it after one hour. That's a basic rule of thumb that counts for repeaters and for the max hangs. All right. So yeah, that's how you, uh, you know, the repeaters are essentially for gaining the muscle fibers and the max hangs are for strengthening them up to really recruit them and stuff like that. And that's already a basic hangboard program that you can do during, let's say, two months or something. I would say train two maximum three times a week, okay? If, especially if you're a beginner, rather start with two times a week. 
okay and be very careful with the tendons muscle fibers and all that kind of stuff elbows something starts, starts hurting of course you may have to pause it there because it's really intense especially if you haven't done it before okay so second best thing to train at home which you only need a floor basically for and maybe a wall uh, that's of course core strength all right so I've talked about core strength a number of times already, really helpful for rock climbing to hold up that body tension, to be able to step small footholds on overhangs, to not slip off of them. You need core strength, okay? You need that back muscles, the lower back muscles, and ass, of course, and also some, some belly. So what you can do to gain that is, of course, the classic floor exercises, L-sit, push-ups, and all that kind of stuff gets a bit boring in my opinion with time so that's why I found for myself what's really cool are these handstand ups okay so the try is simply put your palms of your, on your, of your hands on the ground and then try to lift off your feet okay arms as much parallel to your legs as possible and then simply try to lift off your feet and I know for most of you or for some of you maybe who are beginners in this kind of stuff it may sound crazy and completely impossible it felt like that for me in the beginning as well okay so stick with it stick with it do it every day for 15 minutes or something like that okay 15 minutes just spend time lift off your foot and <laughs> your feet one second if you can't hold it longer than one second then do it one second Make one minute rest and try again, again one second. Okay, that's already enough. Often it's just recruiting the muscle fibers again because we don't use these muscles a lot in everyday life. And uh, now with these exercises, we are activating them for the first time actually. Okay, but these are really important muscles uh, for, for body strength and also injury prevention. You know, this kind of, all this antagonistic stuff which they always talk about for injury prevention. This is just that, okay? It's an extremely simply, simple exercise, but very, very useful. And if you want to step it up a notch, if you want to take it to the next level, then you can try the planche stuff that I always try, okay? Now, you gotta be a bit careful with this as well. Um, for me personally, I tend to, to gain a lot of muscles relatively quickly, quickly, relatively easily. And this stuff actually can make you so heavy that you can actually decrease your climbing performance again. Although you have more body strength, more core than ever before, uh, you know, if, you, if you're carrying such big delts around, it's not necessarily going to help you with your climbing. It may help you with injury prevention, that could be, but it's also going to make you a bit heavier and a bit beefier, and that's actually what we not want when it comes to climbing performance, especially rock climbing on lead, you know, the rope stuff that I usually do. Um, yeah, gives you a lot of core strength, of course, but you don't want to get too heavy at the same time. So yeah, core stuff. Point number two, something that you can do very easily. Everybody can do that. With the handstand stuff, if you're not comfortable to, to start with, you know, just doing it freestyle on, your, on the ground, basically start at the wall, do it against the wall. And if you're comfortable with holding the handstand against the wall, like 15, 20 seconds, start trying some handstand push-ups. Okay, extremely uh, efficient, extremely effective for shoulders and triceps and that kind of stuff. Again, antagonistic stuff. Uh, and then point number three, something that is always neglected by a lot of people, flexibility of course. Flexibility of the lower body, of the hips, okay, legs and hips. My standard routine still counts, okay? Try to get good at the splits, try to get good at both splits, okay, the side split and the front split. That's the challenge. A lot of people have genetic predispositions for one of, of the two, but getting good in the other one as well, that's where the challenge is, okay? So try to spend some time with that as well. Um, I would say it is definitely enough to train, uh, to, to stretch every second day, okay? I have the feeling if I stretch properly, I can feel it the day after in my muscle fibers and tendons. So it makes sense to give these muscles then a rest for one day and then stretch again the second day. Okay, so every second day stretching. Same is true for core strength. Okay, if you're doing it for the first time, you never did it before, maximum two times a week. Then you could increase it to three times a week. All right, and you would be surprised if you stay consistent with this stuff where you end up after two months. Okay, two months is quite a long time, and we are orienting ourselves at that. Because you know the fingerboarding regimen lasts for two months as well. So there you have it. We have finger training, 
with the, you know, repeaters and max hangs. And if you didn't do this before, you get used to it by some general hangs, you know, just trying your basic grip types out. Maybe this, this initial phase start, lasts maybe for two weeks or something. And then you can start with the repeaters already, usually. Okay, if you don't have, if you're not a very beginner climber in general. Uh, then we have the core strength two times a week, maximum three times a week and stretching again, uh, stretching as well every second day. Okay, so that's already a pretty effective rock climbing home workout regimen, I would say. Uh, the thing is, training at home can only do so much for you. To be honest, um, we've talked about that numerous times before. When it comes to outdoor rock climbing, Okay, so you want to get good at outdoor rock climbing, whether that's bouldering or rope climbing, doesn't really matter. The unfortunate truth is that only this will get you really stronger. Uh, only by doing the rock climbing, the actual rock climbing, the real rock climbing, you will get stronger at rock climbing. But what you can do is, of course, you can create some more resources to work with on rock later on. Okay, that's what you can do at home. But you always have to, you always will notice that you will actually have to learn how to use these resources on rock properly. And once you can do that, you will actually notice uh, a higher grade for something. And that, that's a result, right? That's the result that we want. We want to be able to climb, to climb higher grades faster. And this only happens if you really go out on rock and really do it, okay? But yeah, I hope I could give you some, some general orientation during these crazy times. Go out if the government allows it. Do everything that the government tells you because they only want our best. They would never do anything that, that's bad for us because our government is our friend, you have to know, okay? So do everything that the government does. Go out if the government allows you to. And we will see you soon in the next video, my friends. Be happy, stay healthy, uh, don't get corona infested. Uh, yeah, I'm doing my best here as well, bye.